Well, I'm glad you guys are all here. We're gonna talk about um, Google Maps Street View and how you can take your, your class and your students to all these different places and make them feel like they're actually there virtually. Um, and so there's lots of neat things that we're gonna do with that. And I've got some resources for you. I'm gonna show this to you real quick. Um, all the resources for all like six of the sessions that I did here are all available right here at ditchthattextbook.com slash ViewSonic. And so that gives you all the step-by-step -step instructions of how to use uh, Google Maps Street View. Or I talked earlier about how you can do stop motion animation with Google Slides or how to do choose your own adventure stories with Google Slides. And all of the step-by-step -step of how to do that is all right here on this page. And so if you've got a book in front of you, everybody that's here that stays for the presentation gets a copy of the, the book. So if you've got one, what you can do is just write this right up here at the top of the front page or on the back of it or something. That's kind of what I suggest that people do. And this page isn't going anywhere. It's got lots of good stuff on it. So, um, so anyway, that's going to be kind of our jumping off point for uh, Google Maps Street View. So. I love this tool and I love using maps just because they cross over so many content areas and you can use them on so many different grade levels. I mean, all the way from the youngest students all the way up to, I mean, all the way into college, maps are relevant a lot of times. And so, um, so we'll start off here. This is obviously where we are, or at least pretty close to it anyway. So it's a map. Big deal, right? <laughs> but. The cool thing about this map that you may not realize has to do with this little guy right here. Do any of you know about the little guy? Little yellow peg guy? Okay. All right, so I'm going to click him and drag him over onto one of these blue streets. If you're not familiar with this, check this out. Now all of a sudden we're right down there on the street. And so we can pan around. We can look up, we can look down, we can even go down the street. Look at the houses, look at the cars. Makes us feel like we're going the wrong way down one down the down the street, right? Okay. So that just in and of itself is pretty impressive. Do you guys know how these all come to happen? How these images come to be? What is what takes those images? A car. Uh, yes, that's right. A car, the Google car, right? Because it's got this panoramic camera on top of it, and as it drives, it shoots pictures, and then it geotags the uh, the pictures so that you know exactly where it is. And so whenever you pull this up, it knows specifically that this is the GPS and that this is the image that it needs to because it's tagged to that specific GPS. So pretty cool stuff. Um, so just driving around a neighborhood right near here is probably not that big of a deal in the classroom, right? But if we can use this, oh, this is in Indiana. This is in Zionsville, Indiana. How did we end up there? <laughs> okay, so anyway. That's probably not that big of a deal, but when you start taking kids places that they couldn't go otherwise, that's when this really starts to get cool. Like for example, let's take them to the Eiffel Tower. And so there's the map of it. And so if we grab our little guy, we drop him down right out here, watch what happens. Boom, there's the Eiffel Tower, right? And you can look all the way up and see the top of it. So I'm still, the more that I, I see this, I'm still amazed at what kind of a teaching tool this can be because there's so much you can pull from it, you know? It's like, just by looking at some of these images, you can see what it looks like on a typical day as a tourist at the Eiffel Tower. If you look around a little bit, you can see what kind of clothes the people are wearing. And you can see the transportation, you can see the monuments, you can look at the architecture and see if it's similar or different to the United States. If you go down into town, you can see what kind of shops and businesses and restaurants there are. You can see billboards that have the, you know, the language. And so, I mean, there's just a million different context clues that you can pull from this that's, that's kind of amazing. This is all just available on maps.google.com. And if you didn't see it from earlier, all you have to do to access that is you just grab this little guy, this little, I love how he dangles, by the way, isn't that great? Okay, I'm having too much fun with this, I think. And so that's all it takes to, to create this. And now whenever, if your students all have devices or if they can share devices, 
here's the really cool thing about this, I think, is that if they have their own devices, you can say, okay, drop yourself down in front of the Eiffel Tower. I'm gonna give you five minutes, just go walk around Paris. And it gives them that control and it gives them that freedom. And then once they do that, if they go around, some of them will go down this road and some of them will go down through here and then others will take off different directions. And then after five minutes or so, you can say, okay, so we're gonna come back from Paris now <laughs> and I want you to tell me what you saw and does it match up to what we've been studying? Is there anything that surprised you that you didn't think that you'd see? Is there anything that's similar to the United States? Is there anything that's different to the United States? And all of those lessons that you can pull from that are really, really kind of interesting. The other thing that's great about this is that you can take kids places that they can't easily go even if they're there. Let me give you an example. You know what this is? That's the observation deck of the Eiffel Tower. They didn't drive the Google car up there, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> but there's the Seine River right there. And if you move around, look, you can see down to the people down below. Does anybody know what that is? No idea? Yeah, me neither. OK. <laughs> Something impressive. <laughs> Okay, so, and then you can walk around up here too. You can see what it looks like to be up on the observation deck of the Eiffel Tower, which is pretty amazing. And there are even pretty impressive places that you can take them. I just found this one the other day. Take them to Alcatraz Island, which is pretty neat. Watch this. Take them inside the prison. Isn't that crazy? We can look up and down. We can walk down the aisle here. Look into the cells. Okay, there's one more I have to show you that's, that's kind of amazing. You can go to the White House too. There are parts of the White House that you can walk around. Let's go to the Palace of Versailles. You see all the little intricate blue lines right there? That's what shows you that there's street view available. So this is obviously indoor street view. There's Versailles right there. So you can actually take this a step farther. Um, you, have you guys heard of Google Cardboard? It's like that little viewfinder looking thing that you can use with your phone. Well, if you get the street view app for that, stick your phone into Google Cardboard, and then it becomes this immersive experience where you're using your phone, basically. It's inside of this little viewfinder. And whenever you take this viewfinder and you look up, it pans up. Whenever you look down, it pans down. Whenever you look left, it pans left. It does it for you. And then you can, you can walk around. It's, it's really amazing. And so Google Cardboard is not that expensive. And even if you just get a couple of them, the only trick then is, do you have cell phones that you can stick inside of there? Let me give you an idea on that. If you're interested in doing that, do a smartphone drive with the parents of your students. How much do you want to bet that somebody has an old smartphone sitting around somewhere at their house that they'd be willing to donate with the power cord that you could slide into Google Cardboard and you could use, and then all of a sudden you've got your own Google Cardboard kit that lets you do an immersive experience with that. So. It's, it's doable, it's doable, which is kind of amazing these days, so. All right, so there's that. Now, if you like the idea of those inside walk around the buildings type of, type of deals, let me show you a whole list of what all is available. This page again, by the way, is at ditchthattextbook.com slash ViewSonic, if you wanna check that out. And so, oh, I don't have that on here. I think it's called indoor maps or indoor floor plans or something. If you Google it, you should be able to find it. I'm doing a whole session on this tomorrow, and I know the link is there. If you're interested in getting that link, let me know, and I'll get it to you by the, by the time we're done. Okay? All right. So let's look at Street View Treks next. So what Google did is they took this Street View experience, this immersive panoramic picture experience, and they took it to the next level. 
by taking the panoramic camera that they use on top of the Google car to do those street views, and they took them to all these places around the world to create these unique experiences where you get to go there and actually, like the Galapagos Islands, you actually can go underwater and see the marine life in full panorama and walk, well, you're not walking around, you're swimming around, right? You can go to the canals at Venice. I like this one. This is El Capitan at Yosemite National Park. So basically, El Capitan is this huge rock face. And so you go with the group and you get to go, oops. No, I gotta start it first, start the climb. So let's go just to a random spot in the middle of the mountain. And so once we get there, see how we're climbing up to right there? Let's see if we're ready to do it yet. Let's hit explore. Here we go. Maybe I need to use it over here. There we go. Can't do it with this. Look up. Is that freaking anybody out? <laughs> Here's the thing I love most about this. Watch this. Let's see, where are they? There we go. You see that little dot? Watch this. That's the chimney maneuver. He employs a chimney technique to ascend the Texas Flake using his entire body to shimmy his way up a shaft. They've got these little points that you can click on to get more information about specific things. Let's close that one and let's look at this. The Texas Flake side, this is the Texas Flake right here. It's for its lone star shape. Shows the three sides of a giant chunk of granite that's detached from the wall. And so he's shimmying up the Texas Flake so that he doesn't have to use his other techniques, probably to rest his muscles, I'd imagine. So this is the kind of stuff that's out there that, that just amazes me. And so as far as street views go, they go, I mean, all over the world and all sorts of different places. And again, imagine if you just let kids jump off and go explore on their own. And so they don't have to just look at whatever the teacher shows them up on the screen. And they don't have to just, you know, be at your mercy of whatever you're interested in looking at. If they want, if they wanted to scroll around and zoom into something else, they can they can do it. They've got that that power. So so using street view tracks, that's that's a pretty amazing thing too. All right. I want to show show you a couple of other things real quick. By the way, I've got even more of all of this. I'm doing a session tomorrow. Hey, Rustin. <laughs> I'm doing a session tomorrow in, I can't remember the name of the room, sorry, but it's, it's at the end of the day tomorrow and it's about this kind of thing, only it goes even more into depth. So if you're interested in checking that out, feel free. Okay, GeoGuessr, is anybody familiar with this game? This is so cool. Okay, you've heard of it before? Okay, so GeoGuessr uses this street view imagery and it turns it into a game. Have you ever seen one of those shows where somebody gets scooped up on the side of the road by somebody in an unmarked van and they put like a black pillowcase over their head and take off with them? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, this game is like that. Because basically they take you and they drop you someplace in the world and it's your job to look around, look at the clues surrounding where you are and try to guess where they are. Oh, that was a stop sign, did you see that? And it's in English, right? Okay, that's a clue. So we came to this crossroad. Oh, looky here. That's in Italy. Yeah. Belleza, yeah. Yes, 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 I think you're right. Okay. So the way the game works is we have to drop a pin where we think that we are, right? So for the sake of time. It's probably in the north yeah. Uh, right no, about there? No, a little south. Yeah, maybe there. Right there? Yeah. Okay, let's just try there. <laughs> oh, Turin, you were right in the north. Uh-huh. Hey, but still we got the we got the country right. That's good. Look how many points we got. We've got 4,112 points. So the way the game works is you play this game for five rounds. It totals up your points and you just see how many points you've got at the end. The reason I show this to you is this is this is what I'd file under sites I want my students to go to when they have downtime. Because I'm a high school Spanish teacher and even though this isn't specifically Spanish, I would much rather them do something academic like this that works on their problem solving and their reasoning than Flappy Bird. 
or whatever other thing it is that they might be doing. Now, there's also this thing called, there's this thing called GeoSetter. See if I can find the. I have Geo Game on my phone. Really? Yep. Okay. I, I think I spelled this wrong. Geo Setter. There it is. Let you create your own GeoGuessr challenge. So if you want to drop kids in a specific spot anywhere around the world, you go figure out where it is. And then once you've got the spot, then it generates a link. See, this, this is pick that place and you hit set round one, and then that place is set. And then you go find round two, round three, round four, round five, and then when it's done, you get a link. Copy that link, give it to your students, and they can go to all five of those spots. So if you're studying a specific city, or if you're teaching them about your state, or if you want them to go to a certain country, you can set the exact spots where they're, where they're dropped, and then they can guess from there, which is pretty cool. All right, last one real quick is Smarty Pins. Smarty Pins is geography based, it's map based. So this is another one of those where I hope that my students, this is one of those places I want my students to go if they've got downtime. So Smarty Pins is kind of like GeoGuessr's cousin in that, here, here's our question. Angela Chase or Claire Danes lived her so-called life in this famous steel town. I'm thinking you're right, I think it's Pittsburgh. Okay. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna zoom into Pennsylvania. Maybe. Uh, where's Pittsburgh? Oh, this side, okay. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. My Pennsylvania geography is not the best. Drop it right there, submit the answer. Nailed it, perfect answer. So the way that works is if we had picked a spot that was 20 miles away, instead of actually picking Pittsburgh, you start with 1,000 miles. If you're 20 miles away, it subtracts 20 away. If you're 100 away, it subtracts 100 away. And then your final score is the number of questions that you got before you ran out of miles. That's how the game works, which is, which is pretty cool. And then it's got different categories of questions that you can use too. So if you've never heard of this, this is another neat thing. It's just a nice supplemental thing for kids to be able to do that does practice map skills too. Did I mention that this is on this awesome monitor? <laughs> Being in a ViewSonic booth, I have to say real quick, this is a 70 inch monitor, touchscreen monitor. I would love to have one of these in my classroom. And so the neat thing about it is it's got this 10 point recognition where I could put all 10 of my fingers on here and I could do a gesture with all 10 of them and they would figure it out. Like if I was drawing, I could draw with all 10 of my fingers all at once if I wanted to. So pretty cool stuff. All right. So that's most of my stuff that I've got here as far as Google Maps Street View. So if you got any questions, I'll still be around. If you didn't get a copy of my book and you hung out for the presentation, we can make sure that you got a copy. Yeah, no problem. If you want me to sign it, I'm happy to do that too. So. All right, great. Thanks for coming. Have a wonderful rest of the day.